Hey guys, Mr. BXRP here, and welcome back. Today is October 8th of 2020. Wow, I've had an insane day today. I'm back to back with clients all day. Wasn't planning on making a video, but the news today has been fast and furious and nuts, and I had to get on here and do something. So here I am, I'm gonna try and get through as quickly as possible. So let's get rolling. Uh, sitting here on Fiat League, it looks like XRP is just above 25 cents, feeling a little bit active uh, this afternoon, it looks like. Okay, here we go. Um, the uh, market cap is at 344 billion. Bitcoin sitting at 10,897. Ethereum's at $3.51. Tether holding comfortably at $1. And XRP is just over 25 cents. So those are the numbers. Now let's jump into the news here. Where is the news? Let's start here with Ripple. Okay. So Ripple announced today, and here's here's the Ripple announcement. Today we launched Line of Credit, a new beta service that allows RippleNet customers using on-demand liquidity to settle instantly source to to instantly source capital and initiate payments using XRP. Read more on Insights. Okay. So jumping over to where do I want to jump to? I want to jump to here. All right, so I jumped to the ripple.com website, and here they are. Uh, RippleNet, secure upfront capital for your payments. Boy, they got some cool graphics on here. Send now, pay later with line of credit. Freeing up capital for your customers' cross-border transactions can be inefficient. At the same time, creating credit arrangements for each destination market is time-consuming. With a line of credit from Ripple, your financial institution can use XRP to complete instant, low-cost cross-border transfers. We allow you to lock in a rate at the time of the payment, then repay us when it's convenient for you for a small fee. And it goes on to say, and this was from Ashish Burla, early customer feedback on the line of credit beta shows that the service is helping money transfer service businesses make global transactions even more affordable for their customers. And it goes on to say, um, valuable, uh, improve working capital positions and fund fresh growth for your business, scalable, access any global market using one simple credit arrangement through RippleNet, efficient start payments without having to manage your your account balance and cost effective benefit from competitive rates that lower your cost of capital. So then it goes with number one, let's chat, give us an overview of your business goals and how we can help. Number two, send transactions, use XRP provided by Ripple to complete your cross-border transactions. So literally they're getting lent the XRP from Ripple. Number three, make repayments, pay back each draw on a fixed repayment schedule that's convenient for you number four get more funds pay off your balance uh, and more credit will be automatically made available made available so this is amazing look i don't understand the in and outs of this okay so ashish burla posted on twitter talking about it as well i asked him if he can give an easy uh, explanation like a simple example of how someone might use it i i guess they're loaning the xrp but 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 I don't know if they're loaning the entire amount that they're sending all as the XRP. Like it's a little confusing to me what's being done and how it's being done. So I don't want to go too much deeper into it. I think we're going to get clarity very very soon what they're doing. And from what what I can gather is that it's going to allow. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think there are some institutions and some maybe smaller institutions that have wanted to use ODL that for whatever reason couldn't because they didn't have the capital to get it going. And I think this is going to remove a barrier of entry to get people using ODL. That's what I see here. I don't understand the inner workings. I don't get how it works. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not even going to go there. I think it's going to be really clear really quick. And, and if it's not clear to us in the next day or two, I'm sure they're going to talk about it at Swell. Um, and they'll probably have some demos at Swell that I'll be able to talk to you about and share with you what's going on and how it's working. So exciting stuff. I mean, today has been insane. So this was from James Rule XRP, and he said, boom, Attorney General William Barr announces publication of cryptocurrency enforcement framework, Department of Justice. So the Department of Justice is coming out with a, a framework of cryptocurrency enforcement, and uh, I don't think it's been released yet, but I know it's coming out. There was some more, more information about you know what they're doing and how they're doing it, but but the actual framework I don't think has been released yet. It's uh, like so much is happening today all at once. It's really absolutely, absolutely insane. This video I thought was interesting. I'm gonna play it right now, and it was, it was on Squawk Box, um, and, it's in, and here's the quote. 
We want our elected officials to experience the power of blockchain technology in their own hands, says Perry NDC at Perry NDC. Um, and she's on uh, Crypto for Car Congress, donating $50 to lawmakers. Blockchain is the financial infrastructure of the new digital economy. So she works for the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Uh, actually, she started it. Um, and here is what she had to say. Uh, behind crypto. There are questions, by the way, about whether these donations, if this, if this $50, 50 of Bitcoin turns into, I don't know what, uh, does, 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 it, does it create any, uh, any, any legal ethic, ethical issues? No, absolutely not. Look, the best way to learn something new is to experience, experience it for yourself. And we want our elected officials to experience the power of blockchain technology in their own hands. And our hope is that members will start to understand the critical importance blockchain technology is going to play in the global economy for many generations to come. That's the point of us. How much of though is this an effort at, at pushing Congress to, I imagine, create laws or, or open up some laws around cryptocurrencies and blockchain and the like. And how much of it is it about dealing with the regul regulatory uh, complex? Because to some degree, ultimately, it's going to be the Treasury Department and it's going to be the SEC, which is going to decide the fate and future of all of this, no? It's bigger than that. Blockchain technology is the most important technological innovation we will see in our lifetimes. Blockchain is the financial infrastructure of the new digital economy. Look, there's many other nations like China, Singapore, Japan, Switzerland, the European Union. They understand this and they are all racing to have dominance in this space. And the U.S. isn't even on the playing field. This would be a significant challenge to both our national security and our economic security to have foreign actors controlling the systems and the governance that will power the digital economy. This is our message. Boy, is she a great spokesperson for blockchain and digital assets. That's fantastic. So she's obviously doing great things in Washington, and um, and and I, I expect more great things from her and her organization as well. Um, the uh, And this is the Chamber of Digital Commerce. If you want to check it out, and if you go through and want to look at their leader, you can look at their leadership team. You can look at their board of advisors, Chris Giancarlo. Look at that. Um, this is very, very interesting stuff. The people that are involved, it's very, very cool. So I think it's, I think it's awesome. Okay, this is a big deal. All right, so Swell, they just released, I believe it just got released, the agenda and the speaker list for Swell. And the agenda, and just so you know, it starts at 3 a.m. They're running on London time, I believe, because it was originally supposed to be in London. So I don't know if they decided to run on London time uh, because they were originally supposed to be in London. And out of respect for the, you know, for the Europeans, they decided to go ahead and keep it on London time. So uh, for us, it's going to start at three o'clock in the morning. But there is an agenda here. If you want to look at it, go to uh, swell.ripple.com and you can look through the agenda. And then the keynote speaker list is there too. And let me show you what I think is very interesting about the keynote speaker list. If you go down to the bottom, we have, there's some great interesting people here, guys. I don't mean to just gloss over them. I'm not gonna go over it uh, in depth today. Uh, we have the Federal Reserve Board, David Mills, Deputy Associate Director, Federal Bank um, Operations and Payment Systems. So the Fed is going to be at swell this year. I think that's breaking news, guys. That's absolute breaking news that the Fed's going to be at Swell this year. You know, a lot of a lot of the years at Swell, they've had big headliners. They've had um, uh, they had Bill Clinton one year. I think they had Bernanke one year, and uh, and this year there's going to be David C. Mills, Deputy Associate Director, Program Director, uh, Direction Section, Federal Bank Operations and Payment Systems. Boy, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. In relation to Ripple and um, uh, and and blockchain and and it's absolutely fantastic. So I thought that was great. I want to share that with you. This was uh, what came out from CoinDesk and it said Square said Thursday it has purchased four thousand seven hundred nine bitcoins at fifty million dollar investment. You know this is the second big company that I can remember in the last couple of months that's put an investment uh, in Bitcoin. There was another company, and I forget the name. It was uh, it was a tech company that put a lot of money in Bitcoin, 
And I just wonder how far off we are from companies doing the same with XRP, which would be absolutely fantastic. So that was great news. I love seeing that. Um, hey, this is linked to, I, I know you guys hear me talk about it from time to time. Let me tell you, if you download their app and register, first of all, you have to be an accredited investor to buy any of their investments, but they have made it very clear to me that if you download their app and register, they will invite you to conferences and happy hours and all kinds of neat things that you can sit in and listen to speakers and be involved and ask questions. So if you're interested in any kind of investing like this, whether it's now or in the future, uh, you could check the links in the description of this video and I have the downloads for their app if you'd like to do that. And this video I thought was fantastic. Uh, this was posted by the Crypto Dog and it said, family reacting to XRP's transaction speed. Um, I can't play it all because of the music, but watch their reaction to the speed of XRP. Ready? <laughs> How great is that? Uh, that, is, that is awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let it play and I'm gonna kill the music and let them go ahead and jump around. That is hilarious. Family reacting to XRP's transaction speed. Okay, guys, I needed to make it quick and short. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lender of XRP, but I would sure like to lend my XRP someday. And I'm not a crypto expert. These are my opinions only. Don't make any financial decisions based on anything I say. Please like and subscribe. Hey, if you like my video, please hit, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now. Um, and also share my videos with anybody who you think might appreciate them. Everyone have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.